Let's open our Bibles to Acts chapter 19 today. Acts chapter number 19. And we're going to look at a portion of Scripture here today that I hope is going to be helpful to us. We're just traveling through the book of Acts, and it's amazing as we look each week at this book that things are just uh, uh, speak right to what we're living today. And that's because the Bible is alive. The Bible is a living book. It's not a dead book. It's a book that was not written by men. It was inspired by God. Men just kind of wrote as the Spirit of God told them what to write. And so we have a living book, a letter right from the Lord here in our hands today. In Acts chapter number 19, we left off last week. We, were, we looked at this, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God working, and the Spirit of God is alive today, and He's working in our lives, and He desires to lead us, and we need to be yielded to Him. This week, we pick up reading in verse number 11, and what a wonderful verse this is. And God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. Aren't you glad that God is still in the miracle business? He still saves souls. He's still at work. We could look at all the situations surrounding us today in our world, but don't forget, Christian, God is still in control, and God is still doing miracles, and God is still powerful, and He's still on His throne. In the days of Acts here, in uh, Paul's time, it, I'm sure, at times looked hopeless, and it looked bleak as he was going to places like Athens, and and they were worshiping other idols and other gods, and and there was no, no sense of, of the one true God and the worship of Him. I'm sure at that time it looked like, like uh, very bleak for Paul, but Paul knew that God was powerful. As Paul was placed in prison and as Paul was, was beaten for preaching the gospel, I'm sure at times it looked almost defeating for Paul, but Paul believed that God was still at work. And as we look around our lives and we are experiencing things all around us, don't forget, Christian, that God is still alive and God is still at work and God is still performing miracles here in this earth. So we find in verse number 12, so that when, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and, and aprons and, di- and the disease departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. And so this is... Paul is is preaching and performing these miracles by the by by God's power. It's not anything that Paul's doing in his flesh. And people are just coming to him and and just simply coming and getting near him and touching him. People are being healed. And it wasn't Paul that was doing it. The Bible is very clear. God wrought special miracles. Paul was just a vessel that God was using. And those that were sick and those that were helpless and those that thought that the end was near, those that uh, uh, doctors couldn't help, those that family members couldn't help, those that probably had these these, uh, uh, sickness and these disease that they were told by doctors just maybe before they went to Paul there, it's hopeless and this is going to take your life. They went to Paul, and because God was still doing miracles, they were healed. And something else here in this verse, the end of this verse, tells us those that that had evil spirits. Those that, uh, these evil spirits were on them, and we could read throughout the Bible, and in a few verses we'll find here, when an evil spirit possessed a person, what what a horrible life that person lived. Remember that maniac that lived up in the, the, the uh, tombs there at, uh, uh, in, in, in the times of Jesus. And, and when Jesus went to him, he would cut himself. And, and he was living in tombs. He was isolated. What a horrible life that was. Others we would read of that the spirit, that evil spirit, would cause those young children to, to fall over and foam from the mouth and have these seizures. And what a, what a horrible life this was. And no one could help them. There wasn't a doctor alive that could give them something that could get rid of that evil spirit. There there wasn't a religion that could free them of that. They were hopelessly, uh, and they were bound in that evil spirit. But because of the power of God, because of Saul or Paul in him working, allowing God to use him, those that had these evil spirits came to him, and those evil spirits departed. 
but there were certain of the vagabond Jews in verse 13. Why in the world, I read this and I think to myself, why would anyone not like what was going on? I mean, you think about it. If you knew there was a place that people were being healed of their sickness and these evil spirits were being cast out, why would you want to stop that? Why would you want to stop people's lives being changed and, and those that were once hopeless now find hope? Those that were once sick now are healed. Those that once were just, uh, uh, their life was made miserable because of these evil spirits. Why would you want to stop that? Well, the same reason why the world today wants to stop the preaching in the name of Jesus Christ. The same reason why the wickedness today wants to stop the church from moving forward. It's the same thing we're experiencing today. But there were certain of these Jews, they took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of the Sceva, a Jew, the chief of the priest, which did so. Look what these spirits did. And the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. But who are you? The Spirit said, there's no power. You don't have any power over us. Jesus, he's got power over us. They, they remembered those evil spirits. They thought there was a victory when Jesus was there on the cross. And, and when he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost, they thought there was a great victory that day. But oh, three days later, that victory that they thought they had, they realized they didn't have a victory because Jesus rose again from the grave, conquering death and conquering hell. They knew he was the Son of God. There's power. There's victory in Jesus Christ. And those evil spirits said, ah, Jesus, we know there's power in his name. Paul, we know. How, how do we know Paul? Because he's a, uh, some great person. No, because he's yielded to the Spirit of God. There's power. Paul is preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus. But who are you? There's no power in your name. And look what these spirits did. The man in whom the evil spirits was leaped on them and overcame them. And they prevailed against him so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Now, if this wasn't so severe and so done by evil spirits, it'd almost be laughable. These men think that they're going to stop the preaching of, of Jesus Christ, and they're going to stop the servant of Christ, Paul, from healing people. And, and, and they call these evil spirits, and, and those evil spirits say, you've got no power, and they come upon them, and these people leave where they're at just naked and 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 wounded the bible says you know they realized that day they didn't have any power jesus had power paul had power but those others that tried to to seduce these spirits to 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 uh, uh for their own good and for their own use they realized we have no power and this was known the bible says in verse number 17 to all the Jews and the Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on all of them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Now, I want you to circle something here. They're in a place called Ephesus. They're in the city of Ephesus. Ephesus is a place where Paul, during his missionary journey, has established a church. Paul has stayed there for some period of time. Matter of fact, there's going to be a book of the Bible that is, is named Ephesians that Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus. And Paul will later write this epistle to them. And we're going to look at that in just a moment, but I want you to take special note of that. And this was known to all the Jews. And in verse number 18, and many that believed came. And look what happened when Jesus Christ was magnified. And many that believed came, confessed, showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they continued or counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Now, there are several verses here that I want to bring attention to as we start this message. Because if we look at this passage of Scripture, it's, it's, it's really disturbing. There, it's disturbing because there is power, there is, is, is uh, uh, 
hurt that can come, and, and, and these evil spirits are powerful. This wasn't just some kind of kid's game. This was real. And they were causing great damage and great hurt. There was great influence that these evil spirits had. And since creation, there has been a battle for good against evil. Matter of fact, this battle, it started even before creation. It started in heaven when Lucifer wanted to, to be like God and did what he could to exalt himself above God. And the Bible tells us that a great battle took place in heaven and a third of the angels were cast out of heaven along with Satan. And, and since that time... Every time God seeks to do something to glorify him, Satan always seeks to disrupt it. I've said that to our church many a times. When we start with this verse, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, you write it down, guarantee it, without reading any further, Satan is going to do whatever he can to disrupt that. Any time that God is at work, Satan is also at work. There is evil in this world. I believe what we're experiencing and what we're seeing in today's world is evil, is wickedness. There's always been a fight from evil against good. It's always existed. It existed before creation. It existed at the time after creation. Whenever God is at work, Satan seeks to disrupt it always. If you don't believe me, go ahead. Surrender your life to the Lord. And see what happens. Decide that you're going to live for Christ. I've talked to so many people, they've said this. You know, it was a lot easier before I got saved. I've heard people say this. It was a lot easier before, what, before I surrendered my life to serve the Lord. It just seemed like there was no pride. It seemed like once I surrendered, all the, the problems came. The onslaught came. I'll tell you why. Because wherever God seeks to bless, Satan always seeks to disrupt. Always. There is evil in this world. There is a spiritual world that we don't discuss much. Like I said last week, many a times we don't touch the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Some churches emphasize it too much. Other churches don't emphasize it enough. There is a balance. The Holy Spirit of God does exist. The Holy Spirit of God does dwell inside of us. The Holy Spirit does testify of Jesus. The Holy Spirit does convict us and guide us. And all too often, Christian, we're not yielded to the Spirit of God. I think the same thing is true with the spiritual world. We've allowed Hollywood to define or redefine what the Bible says. We, we, we think it's the boogeyman under the bed. No, it's much more real than that. Paul, at, here at this, this, this time in the book of Acts, he's in Ephesus. He writes to the, the church at Ephesus in Ephesians 6.12. He writes to these people because they understand spiritual wickedness. They understand it. How do we know this? They're dealing with it right here. And he says this in Ephesians 6.12 to this church that he's dealing with right here in Acts 19. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Paul is reminding them, he's telling them, and I would say, church, it's a great reminder for us today as well that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but there is powers, there is darkness that's coming constantly fighting against us and sometimes i believe we as christians we 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 fail to remember that and because of that we battle in our flesh we try to combat this the wrong way listen to me there is evil and wickedness that wants to do everything they it possibly can to destroy your marriage there is evil and wickedness that is doing everything it possibly can to destroy our nation. There is evil and wickedness doing everything it possibly can to destroy your life. Cause division and cause friction. 
God wants a child to submit and, and obey its parents. And there is wickedness and evil that's doing everything it possibly can to disrupt that. God desires every child in this room, every young person in this room, every person that has a parent in this room for you to obey and honor them. That's God's desire for you. That's God's plan for you. Matter of fact, he says, if you'll do that, your days will be long upon the earth. That's what God desires. And Satan wants to get in there, and evil wants to get in there, and wants you to rebel against your parents. God wants to bless Every marriage, every man is, is uh, God wants to bless, and every woman God wants to bless, but, but evil gets in there and, and disrupts that unity. Much of what we face is spiritual. But hear me today, we just fail to recognize it. In a crowd this size, oh, I wish we could understand the things that we're facing in our life, much of it, is spiritual but we if we're not careful think that we can fix it in our own strength we believe that that it can be fixed by something we can do the struggles that you face this week at work the struggles that you're facing at home the things that you're seeing across the news i'm saying to you today that they're spiritual attacks it's wickedness it's evil it's satan trying to do everything he can to disrupt and destroy what god is wanting to bless in church we've got to recognize this because we fail to recognize it we then fail to handle it properly we try to fix it ourselves. We try to change it. Because we handle it improperly, we are defeated and we gain no victory. And we have Christians because they're failing to see the attacks are spiritual attacks. They're failing to see that there is wickedness, that there's this uh, powers in high places, this, this evil that we're, we're constantly uh, fighting. Because we fail to see it, we then fail to deal with it properly and we then have no victory and become defeated and there's christians all around and i would say even here in this church that are defeated today because you've not understood that satan wants to attack you you've not recognized it in your life and you've dealt with it improperly and now you sit defeated now you sit discouraged well, listen to me, I'm not trying to be spooky and I'm not trying to scare us. I'm just simply preaching through the book of Acts. But I want you to understand, Satan is real. Evil spirits are real. There is an onslaught, church. What we're seeing across our nation, what we're seeing across our world, evil is real. And every Christian, you ought to have victory. And you must recognize, in order for you to have victory, like Paul had victory and these others had victory, is they recognize that they don't wrestle against flesh and blood. In verse number 11, I want you to see this. There was a great victory by God in Ephesus. Evil always disrupt, it disrupts good. Whenever you find, as I said, wherever you find God was at work, you'll find Satan at work. And I believe this, church, God is at work today. God is changing lives today. I don't want to embarrass this family, but 11 months ago, it was just, just 11 months, if you can believe that, Suzanne Sears went home to be with the Lord. And I used to go over and I'd visit Suzanne as she was there at the, in that hospital bed in her, in her uh, uh, living room. And toward her end, she would say, Pastor, I just want you to pray that my, my daughter and my, my son-in-law will get back into church and that they'll serve the Lord and that they'll do right. And they know this. She put a video together. I can't believe it. Next, next month will be one year since she's passed. God is still working. It was two weeks ago that, that uh, uh, her daughter and her husband stood right here in front of this platform and joined the church. And I said to my wife, you know, that family's been more faithful to church over the last 11 months outside of the coronavirus months we were out than, than a lot of other church members have been. 
I don't think that I could count on one hand how many church services they missed in 11 months. I saw them last week, and in Psalm, the week they joined, and, 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 and God is working in their life, and God is answering prayer. And, 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 and who would have thought that just these 11 months later, there, there'd be an excitement to serve the Lord, an excitement to join a church, an excitement to, to do right. I'll tell you why, because God is still at work. God is still working. Oh, we have a prayer list that we pray over, and, 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 and often we see people with cancer, and we see people that are hurting, but you know, there's so often, I don't think we uh, say it enough, there's so many times that God has answered those prayers, and God has healed, and God has saved, and God has restored, and God has put the broken pieces back together. You know why? Because God is still working in this world. And if we're not careful, we'll just look at the bad. We'll look at what's happening around us. We'll look at the negative. We'll look at the long list of, of, of hurt. And we'll think that, that uh, there's nothing but negative. But I want you to know that God is working. We're seeing that in our world today. But as we see God is working, I want you to see, church, as we see in chapter 19 here, that evil is working as well. Abortion across this country is now in almost every nation across this globe. The homosexual lifestyle is being celebrated across this globe. Fornication is the norm. If you're in a relationship, that's normal. And for the church to preach against these things, people say that's wrong. Murders are on the rise. You watch the news, and they, the, the highlights on the news are how many people have been murdered in a, in a city across our nation and in cities across this world. Murders are on the rise. Rebellion of children against parents is, is greater than it's ever been before. Greed. People don't care about others. They just care about getting. I watched a documentary of a fellow that's made... Two, almost two billion dollars in his life. Now, how many of you think you'd be happy with two billion dollars? I'd like to try it. I'd tell you, I'd be honest with you. I'd like to try it. But you know what he found? It's never enough. He's turned to, to, to alcohol. He's turned to drugs. He's turned to, to, to women. He's turned to every vice he possibly can. And you know what he found? It doesn't matter how many billions he has, he's never happy. He wants more. Atheism is, is, is being preached and, and proclaimed. There is no God. Oh, it's sad. Nations across this world, they're saying there is no God. It's the government that is the God. There are cries in the street that there is no God. People are angry. If you don't believe me, let the stoplight turn green for one second and don't move. And what happens? I mean, you got, you, you're getting rear-ended. I mean, you're getting somebody's out of their car. They got a baseball bat. They're throwing coins at your car. I mean, you, you, just, you just don't do something someone's way and you see how angry they get. I should say, someone doesn't do something our way. See how angry we get, right? Love of money and the power it brings. Racism and hate across our, our world. Sexual perversions. Just to see the sex trafficking that takes place and, and, and child pornography and, and drunkenness and drugs. They're prevailing across this world. And, and we think it's just that someone has a, a bad habit. No, there's wickedness and evil in this world. That's why those things exist. Well, they just had a bad upbringing and it's their way to deal with it. No, there's evil and wickedness in the world. That's why those things exist. And man has tried, and governments have tried, and, 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 and organizations have tried to, to fix these things. You know what we find? They're just as bad, if not worse, today than they've ever been. Because man can't fix these things because it's out of the sinful heart these things come. It's out of wickedness that these things come. 
It's out of principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world that these things come. But oh church, while the church fell asleep, evil continued. church became enamored with worldly influences the church thought unless we we if we continue to teach about a relationship with christ and we preach the gospel that people won't want to hear it the church began to allow wicked behavior in our thoughts and we thought that we could handle ourselves Christians thought they could handle a portion of pornography and, and be able to deal with it, and it won't affect my life. No, it, it, you said it, it's something that I've kept private. No, what it does, it allows the Holy Spirit of God to, to not be, you not be yielded to Him, and so you're, you're, you're powerless now. Christians thought that drunkenness was okay. Christians think and thought that worldly desires could be controlled in small doses. Christians think and thought that they could play church on Sunday and then live however they want all the rest of the week, and it's going to be fine. But I want you to see in verses 13 through 16 here in this verse, would you please write this down? Evil is powerful. Evil is powerful. And evil is prevailing here in Acts, and it's prevailing here in our world today. And we have no business playing around with it, church. There's no business having it in our homes. There's no business having it in our thoughts. There's no business having it in our actions. There's no business having it in our church. We ought to do everything we can to realize that sin is wicked and wicked is powerful. And we ought to do everything we can with the Lord's help to resist that and flee from it. As I was studying for this, I thought about the old-time tent evangelists, the old-time preachers that would go to cities and throw tents up, and, and they'd preach and, and, and uh, uh, preach hellfire and brimstone preaching and, and uh, 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 preach the gospel hard, and, and lives would be changed, and, and they would go into towns, and they'd set a tent up like this, and, and those old-time evangelists would preach, and, and hear me, bars would close down, and, and, and drunkards would be saved, and, and, and uh, uh, sinful people would come to know Christ. It would change the whole town. Now there's churches on every corner, and nothing's changing anymore. Pastors used to preach against evil. But we're told it doesn't draw a crowd, so stop doing that. People won't come back. It doesn't make people feel good when you preach against evil, when you preach against sin. Visitors will come and they won't return. But I'd say to your church, what we've created is a social event, a social gathering where people come and as long as it has to offer what I like then, I, then I'll do it but if we're not careful evil prevails and, and, and we're not changing anymore oh listen to me church we are in a fight against evil we are in a fight for your family there is a fight for your marriage there's a fight for your children. Oh, church, please today understand evil is powerful. There is a fight against heaven and hell. There's a fight today, and we need to be ready for that fight. Evil wants your family. I love, I, I, I honestly, I love looking out and looking at all these kids. I love it. I like some of the older folks as well, but I'm just simply saying, I, I like seeing kids. It reminded me, growing up in church, you know, the best days of my life was growing up in church. Sleeping under the pews and swallowing my, my offering, you know. My, my cousin and I would see who could, who could swallow the biggest coin. <laughs> he got the quarter. Sorry about his bad luck. <laughs> Listen to me, we, we, evil wants your family. Evil wants your home. Wickedness and evil wants your church and they want your nation. And how do 
do they do this? They, they cause you to think that wickedness isn't really wicked. The wicked one believe, wants you to believe that it's not really sin. Sin is okay. It's not really sin. You can control it. If you can control it, then it's not really that bad. Oh, but I want you to know this today, that wickedness is wicked in its sin, and we ought to understand that we can't control it. And if God calls it sin, then it is sin. The wicked one wants you to believe that you can't win. Listen, I fall into that sometimes. I look at the world around us, and I see the, the things that are all around us, and I think to myself, is it even worth it? You get discouraged when you see certain things, even by good people, and you think, is it worth it? Maybe you're going through a trial right now in your, in your home, and, and, and wickedness and evil wants you to believe this. It's not worth it. Don't live for Christ. It's not worth it. Oh, you might want uh, uh, to raise godly kids, but you can't in this world. Relationships can't survive for godliness. Churches can't make it if they preach against sin. Wicked ones want you to believe that, that you can't win. But I want you to know this, that there is victory because the Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. There is victory for the Christian. There is victory for our church. There is victory for your home because there's Jesus Christ and in him there's victory. The wicked one wants you to believe that the only way to have joy in this world is to enjoy the things of this world. The wicked one wants you to believe that you're too weak and there's no way for you to have victory. But oh, as I said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And who are we speaking of? That Holy Spirit that we spoke of last week, he dwells inside of you. And oh, Christian, there is victory because evil may exist, but so does the Spirit of God. Evil is powerful, number one. Number two, evil can be defeated. Look with me in verse number 11 again. And God wrought special miracles by the hand of, Saul, of Paul. Evil can be defeated. Oh, I didn't bring you here today to, to discourage you and just talk about evil. I brought you here today to show you the whole counsel of the Word of God. Yes, it's powerful. And yes, there's getting victories. But I want you to know evil can be defeated. You can raise godly children in 2020. You can have a, a godly marriage in 2020. Churches can have power by the hand of God in 2020. You can go and live a life pleasing the Lord in the year 2020. Yes, evil is running rampant. Yes, evil is everywhere. Yes, it seems like the world is spiraling out of control. But I want you to know that evil can be defeated because of the hand of God. And we will be a vessel in God's hand, we will see what God can do. Look at me again in verse number 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. You see, Paul was willing to be used of God. If there was a man in Scripture, in life, that I would look to and read about, if there was a man that had every reason to give up, it'd be Paul. I mean, you just think about everything Paul's been through. Now, one of the benefits, I think, of preaching through a book is we now are understanding what the last 19 chapters have looked like. Sometimes, if we're not careful, we'll just pick out passages and we'll preach a message on that passage without even thinking about everything else leading up to that. You've seen the church explode there in, in, in uh, uh, Jerusalem and the day of Pentecost. And remember the beginning of the book of Acts, Jesus said this, that you'll receive power. He's going to ascend, uh, and the Spirit of God is going to come, and the church is going to have power. And remember, he said that, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Remember, Peter it was that preached that, that gospel message, and 3,000 people were saved. And ever since that time, the church was growing because the gospel was going forth. There was a man that was killing Christians. He stood there holding the coats of those that picked up stones and would uh, stone Stephen, the first deacon, for preaching the gospel. His name was Saul. It's Saul that, that was saved and converted on the road to Damascus that now is on a second missionary journey and churches are being established and people are being saved. That's Paul, the Paul we're reading of here. I say all that to say evil can be defeated. 
Evil doesn't have to be more powerful. Evil doesn't have to prevail in our lives. Evil doesn't have to get victories when we will be simply be vessels used of God. Yielded to God's plan. Oh, I want to challenge each and every one of us today, please, to understand evil is powerful, but we have more power in God if we would choose to be yielded to God's plan. Oh, hear me today. Every single person today in this room, from the youngest to the oldest, God has a desire and a plan for your life. He has a will that He's called you to do. You are important. You are vital. And you can have victory if you'll yield yourself to God. Through discouragement, yield yourself to God's plan. Well, listen to me, every single one of us get discouraged. Someone's going to be upset today. We're going to run out of ice cream before you get one. And you're going to leave and say, I'm not coming back to church. Some of you are upset because the pastor tucked in his, his Hawaiian shirt. Who does that? Yeah, the pastor, yeah. Yes. You say that, but I live with four girls that do. <laughs> they told me, Dad, we're not going out to eat with you today if you take us. You're sitting by yourself. Through discouragement. We're all discouraged. I, I met someone in the parking lot today, and, and uh, Brother Vaughn, he said, uh, I said, how you doing? He said, oh, today's one of those good and bad days. I said, what, what's going on? He said, I had a great ch grandchild born, and I said, wonderful, praise the Lord. He said, but I have an uncle that's got COVID, and they said he's not going to make it. Discouragement. But evil can be defeated when we stay yielded to the plan of God. Everything we've studied up to this point is why Paul is able to be used by God. And lastly, I want you to see this. Evil's powerful. It can be defeated when we are vessels used of God. And look with me in verse number 21. And after these things were ended, Paul, circle these words here, purposed in the Spirit. When he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, to go to Jerusalem saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. I, I, I like this verse because what it shows you is Paul's desire and his zeal to continue to do right. The Bible says he purposed in his spirit. You know, every chapter we read in the book of Acts, it could have been an excuse for Paul to quit. I mean, We've thought about quitting for a lot less. How many of you would stop preaching if you got thrown in jail for it? I'd like to say I wouldn't. But I hear guys that tuck in their Hawaiian shirts don't do well in jail, you know? I'm just saying. A lot of us could give up on a lot less. If you're beaten for preaching the gospel, we might stop preaching the gospel. If there was a sheriff's officer sitting in the parking lot giving you tickets for coming to church, how many of you would pull in? You're shaking your head, yes, I would. I'd go back home and preach online, you know? I'm kidding. Hear me today, evil can be defeated when we will be used as a vessel in God's hand and when we purpose in the Spirit that we're going to continue for Christ. You know what Paul, he stopped making fleshly decisions that benefited him. And he simply saw it and purposed in the Spirit that he was going to serve Christ. In order for us to purpose in the Spirit, we've got to stop seeing things in the flesh. I'm struggling at work with this, or I'm struggling at home with this, or I'm struggling with my family with this, or I'm struggling with my parents with this, or I'm struggling with my, my, my parent or my, my siblings with this, or I'm struggling in my church with this. Listen to me, we've got to stop seeing things in the flesh and start realizing there is a spiritual world that, that we need to recognize, and, and we've stopped, 
got to stop seeing things and making decisions in our flesh and how does it please me and start being yielded in our spirit and purpose in the spirit that no matter what, we're going to serve Christ. I'm sure Paul would have rather taken the physical pain that anyone would give than to have to go against evil spirits. Paul purposed that I'm not going to do things in my flesh. I'm going to purpose in the spirit to make decisions pleasing to Christ. And, oh, listen to me, church. I, I want to challenge all of us today to walk in the Spirit and stop making decisions in our flesh and stop seeing things through our flesh and stop seeing things through our own eyes and start allowing the Spirit of God to direct us and to guide us and to purpose in the Spirit that we're going to serve Christ no matter what happens. Put on the lenses of the Spirit of God and see through Him. I... Uh, I wear, I wear glasses. Uh, matter of fact, every, after every service, Michelle says, I wish you'd wear your glasses. I really can read, but my print is so small. Sometimes I'm reading, and all of a sudden my eyes, I'm, I'm, I, I can't find my spot anymore. Anybody else have that same problem? I'm doing this. I, I read like a third grader sometimes, and it's not that I'm that bad of a reader. I just can't see. I, I have them. I have them. And so I, I, I just don't wear them. And so I stutter and I read worse than a third grader would read and I lose my place. And, and Michelle will say to me, we'll get home and she'll say, you did it again today. I said, well, I've got bad eyes. And she says, I don't want to hear it. You've got glasses and you don't wear them. That's what she says to me. Can you believe, how many feel bad for me? That's what I endure. She says, I don't feel bad for you because you have glasses. And if you would wear them, you'd be able to read. Listen to me, church. We have the Holy Spirit of God. Sometimes we want to feel bad and we want to get down and we want to get defeated and we want to get discouraged. But if we would just surrender ourselves to the Spirit, if we'd walk in the Spirit, if we'd let the Spirit of God, if we'd put on the lenses of the Spirit of God and let Him guide us and Him direct us, if we'd stop seeing things through our flesh and stop reacting in our flesh and stop behaving in our flesh, we'd have the victory we think we can't have any longer. The church would be a mighty force moving forward fighting evil we'd be a lighthouse in this community people would see that following jesus christ is the only way people would see the example of christians that are that are spirit filled and desire that for themselves church today i want to remind you evil is powerful but evil can be defeated I want to ask you, as Paul did, would you be willing to be a vessel in the hands of God, used for God, and will you purpose in your spirit that no matter what comes, you will be yielded to Christ? Father, would you help us today? Lord, we can look at the events of this world and get so discouraged. We can say there's no end. We can say it's just getting worse. We can, we can run to the hills and we can hide. We can live in fear. We can panic. Or we can be yielded to your spirit. We can stop seeing things through our flesh and purpose in the spirit that we're going to serve you. Oh God, I pray that you remind us this week. Would you remind us often? Would your spirit continue to to put into our memories that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Lord, there's many today that are in combat, in a war, in a battle. Lord, they're trying to use fleshly means to overcome it. They're trying to go about fleshly ways to gain victory and they're defeated because they feel like they're just overwhelmed and there's no, there's no use. Oh God, I pray they would identify today that the battle they're in is spiritual. 
And there's only one way to combat that, Lord, and that's through you because you are powerful. Because these spirits said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Lord, we are powerless without Christ. We'll never see the victory without using the victor to control our life. So work in us, I pray. Heal broken hearts and mend broken relationships and cause encouragement to come to the most discouraged that are here today. Give victory to those that are defeated. And I pray these things through the precious name and the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue with our invitation. What is it that during this message that God has spoken to your heart? That he's impressed upon you that you're fighting in your own power this morning. And this morning you just need to yield that to him. Maybe this morning you're sitting here and this battle that you heard pastor talk about. You don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you've never begun that relationship with him. But this morning you realize that if I'm going to win the battle that I'm facing in my life, it has to start by accepting Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. This morning, you can do that. This morning, if you're here and you need to receive Jesus Christ, it's really simple. As you heard Pastor talk about this morning in, the, in his message, that Jesus Christ came to this earth. He died on a cross for your sins and for my sins so that we could spend eternity with him. And the way that we do that is by simply acknowledging that Jesus Christ is our Savior. He is the way we can get to heaven, the only way we can get to heaven, and we put our faith and trust in Him. And so this morning, if you need to do that, you can do that here this morning. We're going to bow in a word of prayer. The music is going to play. And this morning, if you're battling with something and you need to give that to God, do that. Maybe you're here this morning and you just need to have somebody pray with you. We have people down here at the front that want to pray with you and encourage you that you're not in this battle alone. And so let's bow with a word of prayer during this invitation time, allow you to respond. And if you need to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can do that this morning. Father, we are grateful and we're thankful that we do not have to fight this battle alone. Lord, that we know that you are with us. And when you are with us, we can defeat the enemy. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to realize as we go through life and we find ourselves battling on our own and we're struggling under our own power, Lord, that we would quickly yield to you and allow you to step in and give strength where we need it. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed this morning, maybe there's somebody here you would say, Pastor Chris, I have never received Jesus Christ as my Savior, but this morning I realize that I can't do this on my own and I would like to receive Jesus as my Savior this morning. Is there anybody that would simply lift your hand up and say, that's me? There's nobody looking around. Just, I want to pray with you and pray for you. Maybe you're here this morning and you would say, I've been battling. I've been struggling. And this message was so timely in my life and I'm thankful that I don't have to leave this place battling on my own again. If that's you this morning, you say, the Lord has touched my heart and I'm yielding something to him. I'm relying on him more this week than I have last week. Would you just simply raise your hand and say, that's me? Thank you. Put your hands down. Father, you have seen the hands. Lord, we know that there are those who are struggling this morning and they're needing you to step in. And Father, we pray that you will do as you promised you would. Lord, thank you for allowing us to meet here in this place. Lord, thank you for allowing your word to be boldly proclaimed. And Lord, we ask that you'll take us safely home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now before you go, we've got just a couple of things we wanted to remind you of. Number one, the ice cream sandwiches. Don't miss those on your way out. Number two, if you uh, have friends, neighbors that you would like to invite to our community event, please grab some of these cards and invite them to uh, the community event coming up on July 9th. 
And then lastly, I know that most of you know this, but we are meeting here under the tent for the month of July. And so you can continue to bring your chairs, bring your water bottles, bring your uh, family and invite people to come and join us right here under the tent. Thank you. You all have a great day.